right, here we have uh, basswood on this carving. We're going to be doing a uh, kind of balding wood spirit fellow with beard. Um, and this, this kind of can be turned into a few different things. Um, I'll show you at the end. I've also done a Viking in this size. I got a um, package of like maybe 10 of these pieces of basswood. They're all about the same size. Uh, and you can see here I'm kind of, I'm doing this on a corner, by the way, um, which this is kind of the first time I've really found a full success in making a full face. I think it's this the proportion of the wood um, of this block, but the corner works out great. So, um, and here, this is uh, my new wonderful knife uh, from Deep Wood Ventures. I'll put a link down below. Uh, you can see there's a hoof print burned into it. That's his little uh, maker's mark. <clears throat> it has a beautiful custom uh, burl figured and handle and then this is uh, one of his other knives this is like an entry level it's called the scalpel it's also useful for other detail stuff and i also got from some of his strop which you just saw there um, both of them are, are just fabulous knives um, there's no reason why um, you shouldn't be getting one of his knives uh, whether you're a beginner or you've been carving for a while um, i'll talk about him a little bit more in a little bit Okay, so I'm going to start by just rounding this out because he is going to be uh, balding. He's going to have like a round uh, top of his head, so there's no reason to leave it in there. Go ahead and carve it back now. Basically going like a gradation from uh, the point where it's his nose, about the middle of the block there. It's about a two and a half inch block, uh, maybe two and three quarters. Um, I'd flip it around there. The, the grain on this was going just a little bit diagonal. Um, so down downhills, uh, not quite with the uh, the cut of this block. Uh, this has been some great wood, though. It's uh, kiln dried after it's been um, drying naturally for a little bit. So uh, if you didn't know, uh, there's a, there's a difference between um, naturally dried wood and kiln dried wood. The kiln dried wood that comes uh, like from the guys that sell it, the big commercial people uh, sell it in the craft stores and stuff. Um, They'll kiln dry it as soon as it's cut, and um, it, it really changes the way that the, the, the grain of the wood is. Um, it's a little bit more brittle, I guess you could say. So if it's had some natural drying time, um, it, it cuts uh, a lot nicer. It just feels a little better. And um, I was just learning about this, actually. I found out in a, in a turning book, and I, I kind of noticed it some on my own, but it's, it's hard to say because, uh, you know, wood species, even inside of a species, you know, all wood is different. The trees differ, and parts of the tree differ. So anyway, um, this uh, this piece of wood does have a little bit of spalting on it, which is uh, happens from natural drying a lot of the time. A little bit of moisture gets in there, and it gets uh, kind of dyed from the mold color. Uh, it kind of sounds gross, but um, it can be really beautiful uh, results in wood. Um, so here I'm doing kind of my uh, usual, if you've seen my other videos, uh, how I start faces, uh, which is really getting the, the nose out um, and the brow line and uh, that really helps me figure out where everything else is going to go and, and what the piece is going to look like. Um, I, I make the nose a little bit big because um, you can always take it off later. But I try not to make them too long because that's something that you can't really come back from. Um, you can kind of look at it um, when you're in this process right here. You look and see how big it is. Say is it, you know, is it going to be too long? I mean from the top to the bottom of the nose. Um, because if you get into your lips and or your beard too much, uh, you can't really just shave it down. Um, and also the point of the nose is going to be the tallest. So um, Here I'm starting to work into the, uh, the eye sockets a little bit and the cheek. And I'm still using the knife here because uh, I'm just kind of really enjoying cutting with it. So i got cut up with that. So I'll switch over to a V-tool here. Um, and this is a larger V-tool. It's very large for a palm tool. Uh, I used to use it all the time, and uh, then I got one that was like kind of a medium size, and uh, I've been using that one a lot more. Okay, and here you can see I'm working on the uh, his left side of his face here, getting out that, that brown eye and the cheek there, and kind of the side of the nose at the same time. And I'll switch back over a little bit, cut the nose down. Um, you know how deep the top of the nose goes you kind of just watch that and see how your eyes are going um, in my carving here um, The I am a lot more confident in my eyes and how the it's going to turn out so I go kind of deeper um, But when you're figuring out eyes you want to um, kind of leave a little extra wood and uh, maybe do a few passes To figure out you know the size that you're working at get the eyes out the eyes are going to be the hardest part a lot of time on in, in these kind of carvings. Um, 
because they're strictly against the grain and they're, they're also very detailed little peaks in there. So the eyes, the eyes can be tricky. I'll put out another video here soon on just eyes because I kind of realized um, I've been talking to a, a, a newer carver who's uh, got a lot of talent, has been doing some wood spirits, been turning out great. And it really made me uh, remember what the process of learning eyes was. And uh, I still have trouble with them, of course. Um, but I kind of, in, in a lot of these videos, um, I'm just kind of um, sticking to what I know. And it doesn't really show you, you know, what the actual process of learning them is. Um, and it's really, they're very specific a lot of times to the wood. So they won't really work in other stuff. And um, they had a different size. And um, I don't know, they're just, they're tricky. Um, and I, 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 one of the reasons why I started to do, you know, video carvings is because you can see so much more of what's actually happening. Um, to a certain extent, like what I'm just talking about with the eyes, you know, there is still issues, but, you know, there's a, one of the great carvers that's around still now is uh, Harold Enlow, and um, you check out some of his work. He does uh, these, like, character trick carvings and uh, kind of old school, and then, um, but he also does some books uh, through, I think, Fox Chapel, uh, which is one of the maybe only uh, wood carving publisher still around. Uh, but anyway, um, he does faces and stuff in these books. And in the books, like, you really, they're, like, uh, everything's so basic in the books that you really don't know, like, how to get from one step to another, or what actually happened in between the pictures. Um, so anyway, but with Harold, it was, Harold is so good that it's, like, you. it's hard to learn from a lot of his stuff because it's... Uh, it's just so specific to his level of expertise and his style and what he's been doing. So um, anyway, I'll, I'll try to get in there with another video on eyes. Um, and, you know, if you've been working on them, you just kind of have to figure them, figure them out. And sometimes you won't get, you know, the what exactly you're looking for. Um, and you just kind of have to go with, you just have to bear with it. Um, kind of have to just pick up some tricks, copy them from other people, and then uh, try to make them your own along the way. Anyway, so we're carving out the mustache here, as you can see, the bottom of the face there. Uh, we're doing a little bit of a handlebar, only going up a little bit, uh, so it's not too much cross grain and uh, you know, into the grain, switching grains, I guess, when it curls. Um, need a little about outside of the nose here. I'm trying to keep this carving very clean as I go, uh, which is something you guys should, uh, you know, do in general. Um, at all times, just try to you know keep your carving. Uh, recognizable as to what's going on geometrically. It makes it much easier for your brain to kind of remember and, and kind of figure out what's going on. Sometimes you can get your piece looking so muddy that um, your brain kind of stops being a, a critic, that part of it, um, and then it, it's hard to know what to do um, on the next the next turn to uh, to fix it. Um, it besides, besides that, I mean, it's... Um, on every pass on your way down to whatever the final piece is going to be, it's good to practice your clean cuts because that's when you're going to get to practice in and, um, you know, kind of warm up to it as well on, on that piece. Otherwise, you know, you're going to, what happened on a lot of my early pieces was that all the crevices would get so deep because I kept recutting them and cutting them, trying to get the perfect pass on there. And, um, and eventually, you know, the crevices get too deep and then you you can't clean them up because they're so tight and uh deep i guess <clears throat> anyway um oh so i do like a little point here above the mustache this is kind of like uh where guys have sometimes when they have uh, wild beards they get a little bit of growth growing up um kind of you know right underneath the cheekbone um and so, you know, this, the spirits and this guy's kind of like a Viking looking beard um, that, that that works out well with it. It just kind of breaks it up a little bit, too. All right. And I'm carving in the kind of lines of the side of his face and his hairline there. Um, and we'll round those out a little bit later. But you can see how well the uh, carving on, a, on the edge works. Um, you know, using a cube and carving on one of the edges as opposed to going into the flat side um, because the face kind of has that natural uh, kind of shape to it anyway. Um, you just have to have enough that you can put ears in there. This is what I'm starting to do right here is I'm saying, okay, this is where, you know, the his face is going to be rounding into even with the hair and then kind of on the other outside of that V-tool cut I'm making is where his, his ear or, you know, kind of 
hair around the ear might be. I don't really usually carve ears a whole lot. Um, I will on this one. <clears throat> it's not going to be real super detailed. I don't know. I mean, with when you're doing super hairy wild spirits, you know, they don't you only really notice that their ears aren't there or they're covered by hair kind of deal. So doing a few stop cuts there at the top and bottom. And this is also kind of... Um, starting to show what his hair is going to look like and it's just going to be kind of like wild you know half bald hair uh which that i mean it's just kind of a design that came out of the shape of wood that i was using and um i thought it was really fun so i um i'm going to stick with it on this carving too and uh and so there's the bottom of his ear his ears are pretty big <clears throat> but um he's he's a large featured style you know, his nose is very large, so it kind of works with it. Um, generally, when people have large noses, they also have large ears. And, you know, when, as we grow older, those are the, the features that keep growing because they're cartilage. And so they grow with each other. So they often need to be in proportion with each other, even if it's a, not realistic or silly. And on the bottom of the, the beard underneath the uh, ear, it's also kind of going to echo that. So here I'm going to start cutting also... Um, Cutting out a little bit more of his uh, skull, I guess you could say, uh, top of his forehead and his head. Um, so there is some definition for that hair that's coming out on the sides. And I'm going to round this out now on the side of his face. Um, and I'll end up actually doing even a deeper cut later uh, because his, the sides of his face need to drop back more and be more uh, spherical. Uh, they I, they don't need to be. They could you know they could work with that style, but it's very easy to get a more realistic shape of the head, especially with this shape <clears throat> of a block when you're going on the corner, um, and you just do a little bit of cutting back on on the sides of his his face to make it look like it continues on underneath his hair there. And we're just doing some stop cuts to get that out, and it got a little rough there. Cut a little bit deeper than I wanted to, so I said, okay, we're going to make it a little more round. Um, generally, I have a problem of the faces being too large for the piece of wood, so that they don't. there's no room for ears, there's no room for the side of the head. Um, it's pretty much all, you know, face on there. Um, but on, on these, I've kind of really gotten to, uh, since I've done a few of them, been able to kind of shrink the face down uh, to the proper size so that he does have the rest of his head there. It looks like he's got a full full head instead of just a face on a piece of wood. Alright, so working on rounding out the other side of his face there around his cheekbone. And you see he's really taking shape at this point. And take it, take, make a little bit more cuts there for his head. On these uh, these top cuts, you kind of have to cheat the grain a little bit because you're kind of going into the grain against it. But um, as long as you have a sharp knife and the wood will take it. Um, yeah, these this is my first time carving with these knives. They've been just fantastic, and the the strop has been really nice too. So I'll probably make a video on wood carving knives in general for beginners and everyone. Um, go over some of the knives that I have and uh, the options on, on buying them uh, because it is a bit hairy in the field because wood carving tools in general there's there's not a whole lot of them uh, that you can buy in person that are that are quality um, the craft stores are filled with I mean complete junk and in, in these arts and craft stores um, I mean they I, they sell some of them are expensive too they're they so I don't know it's just if you don't have the right steel heat treat shape um, you're wasting your money and um, I mean I, I I keep seeing people buying these over and over again I bought them over and over again in the beginning um, and it's just I don't know what the deal is it's just not like other products you know America has been maybe the whole world has been on this kick where you know cheap cheapening everything and the, the making and all this other stuff and generally buy the cheap thing and it does the trick it's good enough you know and or at least works but in with wood carving tools it's not it's not the case um, it kind of has to be all or, or nothing. So you generally have to buy online. And um, some of the makers, some of the old school guys, um, you, they, the knives don't really come sharp. They come like mildly sharp, but they leave a lot of that steel on there. Uh, not a very steep bevel because um, carvers all kind of have their own preference on what kind of edge you know they have. And 
for a long time it was like really just professional tools so they didn't have any need to give it to you sharp um, because everybody could sharpen I guess and nowadays it's not really like that and especially when you're getting into carving um, you know you're gonna be on your own you're not gonna know how so uh, you have to make sure that the tools come ready to use um, which these do and that these are also I any way you put it the Deepwood Ventures knives here they're they're just um, top top notch if not the best um, it's not just good steel it's good heat treat um, and he you know checks it off and handmade uh, he's also forging these out of rod stock uh, which means that it, uh, it's not punched out of a, a sheet of steel which is what just about I think all of the makers do um, so it's only gonna be small hand forges uh, small forges um, that are gonna do this kind of uh, forging and I'll maybe talk about it more later in uh, a knife video, uh, but it's um, it really is a different uh, knife uh, in in the way it performs, uh, how heavy it is, its shape, and also its tang, and the way that uh, it transfers force into the handle. So um, he yeah he just makes a really nice knife and still offers them at uh, really great prices. Um, they're they're competitive overall and just for what they are I don't even know how he he sells them and makes any money at all, um, so uh, hope you guys go go support him so he can maybe start doing it full time. Um, I, he definitely should be. I mean, in any other field, um, this guy would be uh, you know on magazine covers or um, you know be on be on Oprah for you know his uh, handcrafted items. Anyway, so um, the this this one I'm carving with now, which is I believe the scalpel, um, this is about twenty dollars of free shipping, um, and that's there's no reason why you shouldn't be buying that for your first knife, and uh, you know for only a little bit more you can go up to a larger blade uh, and a custom handle, or a, not custom handle, but um, you know it's one that's figured. Um, you can get a regular wood too; it's a little bit cheaper, kind of in the middle. But it's kind of like once you get on there, you it's like oh you might as well buy the nicest knife and have that um, but um, they are kinda like so beautiful you almost don't want to use them so buy three or four anyway um, I'll, I'll, I'll quit rambling about that for now but uh, you know it's uh, it's good it's good to push uh, people who make handcrafted stuff and, and are, who are honest and, and, and do the right thing you know um, so I hope you guys go buy some of his knives and enjoy those um, Let's see here. Yeah, and his uh, his stropping compound's pretty good, and he sells strops, and uh, I think he also has some like gift boxes and stuff. I don't know. Um, and if you don't want to get caught up in all that stuff, just tell him you want um, the beautiful knife that Daniel has, and uh, he'll uh, send you over a I don't know a tab, a bill or something. I don't know. Uh, all right, let's get serious here. What are we carving? We're carving a dog, man. No, no, no. All right, so we're cleaning up over here where it kind of gone too deep on the side of his face. And now I'm starting the hair. And as soon as I start this, I make this cut. And you can see that piece is really, um, it's really like chunky and it's a little bit deep. So we're going to go to the alcohol prep. Uh, this is uh, about half water and half rubbing alcohol. Uh, I try to find a high percentage alcohol, rubbing alcohol and uh, mix that together in a spray bottle and spray that down uh, you don't want to uh, dip it in there but you know you spray it um, It you kinda have to keep I'm shaking it to whatever Yeah, you, you kinda let it um, soak in just a little bit so it's you know it's not just on the surface um, and then you may have to respray as you're going because the, uh, the alcohol does um, I don't know dry really quickly and uh, it, it makes a difference immediately, especially in basswood. It doesn't work in all woods, um, but in some it really makes a magical difference. And so when you get into your little details, um, or the wood's just rough and, you know, doesn't feel, it feels a little brittle, then uh, you can spray some of that stuff on. When you're going towards the, especially the cross grain stuff, when you're doing the eyes, I don't think I did it in this one. It wouldn't necessary, but um, a lot of times I'll do that to be safe. Uh, but you can feel the difference uh, immediately. So we're just kind of carving. We're, we're going to stay with a very basic stylized hair, uh, I guess, direction. Um, it's They're not going to be real detailed. You can see they're, they're pretty large. Um, 
uh, but they work it's good enough there's just about well, just a little bit of uh, flat spots on the the peaks I guess you could say uh, but not too much you just kinda wanna keep them uniform and even and it'll work out when you're doing hair and um, you know, try to get your strokes to go from first to last, and you want to kind of have them so that um, they don't go too fast. That you kind of until you have control, that you kind of have like a, a controlled push through uh, a certain amount of wood. Um, you can see here that now the alcohol is soaked in; it's just carving through there like butter. Okay, had a battery change there, and now we're back. So we basically have um, really just his beard to work on at this point. Um, do the hair on that, and then maybe add a few other details. Um, doing the his ear right here, trying to give it a little bit of shape. Um, you can see in the end, I don't do a whole lot of ear detail. Sometimes I try to get in there, and it usually just messes things up. So I uh, just kind of leave it really basic. Is it just kind of shape over there? People don't look at your ears anyway. I hope they don't. Anyway. So here we go, carving up his sideburns. I'm try I try to connect his beard from uh to his sideburns and to his hair so that there's like continuous lines and that they kind of make sense. It just looks like one grid pattern that's been set down. And of course it doesn't make sense in real life. Um you wouldn't have a single hair, but you're just showing the direction and no, people's sideburns generally don't go down, but um, it's okay. It got a little dry because um, I want to change the battery. Uh, there was like a little bit of time to lapse there. Um, and then I'm also I'm carving. De I left those little things under his cheekbones of her, so I'm giving those some hair stuff going on. Um, this carving went really well, and uh, in my last video of carving to carve a king. Um, I kind of talk about why this is a problem for you know this kind of video it doesn't really help a whole lot sometimes um, because yeah, um, I've I'm able to skip past so many steps um, that if you're trying to learn from it um, it can be a bit deceiving or um, I don't know um, I guess just frustrating because uh, you know this is not actually how it goes a lot of the time when you're carving um, you know, on this one, I, I basically make all my cuts to their final position. Um, when I do this beard, like under the mustache and stuff, I mean, I I don't go back in to make any extra cuts uh, to clean up anything, which I usually do. Um, usually the V-tool runs into the mustache or the mustache, you know, somewhere the hair gets messed up and I go have to redo a bunch of passes over it. But I think that there is some value in doing this type of uh, video, besides for entertainment, um, and that is that it, that it is much more simple as far as uh, how I carved it, because there is kind of, it gives your mind a little bit more to model, like this is the next step here. Like in the last one, I didn't have a lot to talk about because um, I just was like carving off tiny pieces of wood from one place to another, and... Um, you know, it's not really a direction you can follow. So in this one, it's just a bit more of a simplification of the process. So um, I hope it's not a complete sellout video. So I'm rounding um, this shape here of the, his lower beard a little bit. Um, sometimes I just go in there with the V-tool and dig it all out, but it's not a very um, nice way to do it. Um, so you try to get the shape of the beard completely uh, before you get the V-tool on there. So this is so uh, close to the bottom that you can't, you don't want to start the V-tool at the bottom um, because it can it can tear out and it's it's hard to get it going. So what I end up doing is I, I'll do all these cuts from kind of just a little bit away from the edge on the bottom there, and then I'll turn it around or I'll do this right here and do a little, this little stab cut I figured out, and you try to. Uh, line those up into the cuts that you've made. Uh, it, again, starting from the bottom like this, it, that was kind of going in to the mustache, but um, I guess I do it from the bottom a few times here. Okay, look, this is this is what you should do: is turn it around. Um, this can cause a little bit of tear out on its own going to the end. It just happens because there's no wood to back it up when you get to the edges of the wood. And so I'm curving it just a little bit. You can kind of imagine a line going to the bridge of the nose if you want. 
uh, for all, all most of the uh, facial hair. Get a little deeper there, and then clean that out. Be a little bit of a lower lip, and we're gonna do his mustache now. This is this is a very deceptively uh, easy looking part here when I do the mustache because I have a on some a lot of the first ones when I was trying to curve the mustaches, um, I had a lot of problems, and um, the alcohol will help a lot. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, you drink a beer. No, um, the rubbing alcohol and the water mixture helps keep it from tearing out. Gives you cleaner cuts and stuff. And um, also, I had a hard time matching the curves. For some reason, when I went from one side of the face to the other, my hand was making a different curve. And so this mustache would look funny. And uh, so I'm just now trying to get that worked out. One of the keys to getting this when it's doing a, you're doing a handlebar and you're getting the, the furs down there is just to don't get over excited about getting hairs in there and getting it detailed all the way to the end you want to think about it more as a basic shape with some lines in it so you know because if you try to get all those lines those hairs to meet up on the tip it's going to tear out somewhere once those lines start converging that's when it, the peaks are just going to get too small and there you see there and all you do have to switch directions a few times um once it starts curving up, and then you're going uphill, kind of. So you have to watch that. Oh, and I'm doing this other little cheek fur on the other side there. And he's about done. Um, we're going to put in right under the eye. We're going to do a bit of like a bag, kind of, to uh, give his eye a little bit more depth. Um, kind of show the bottom of the cheekbone. Do one on the other side there. And, but you really can't see his eyes in this lighting too much anyway, which uh, you can see that it's just kind of like some crevices, um, which works out great on smaller stuff. On bigger stuff, you have to, you know, get a little more creative. Um, yeah, I got to do another video on eyes. Try to work that stuff out on, on when the wood's not working with you or you're at a different size. I'm doing the eyebrows here. Um, they weren't completely necessary to go in there with the V-tool, but... Why not? He's a very furry, wild-looking fellow. So you can see a lot of times when I'm doing fur, um, or hair, excuse me, um, that I don't, that I'll let, like, the uh, sliver of wood be connected, like, mildly, and I'll just brush it off with my hand. Um, and that's generally, if, if I try to go back in there with another tool, then I'll make other cut marks, and it won't be clean. So a lot of times you just try to get that sliver to be attached by just the smallest amount, and then you just pull it off. Just brush it off with your finger. And he looks about done there. Get a little more on the cheek. And I'll show you some pictures. I never really finished this guy yet, um, but I think he's finished. Hope you guys enjoyed. Carve safe. And what was that, half an hour? That was pretty good. Not too shabby. Okay, so um, a few of the other designs, uh, you'll see a little picture at the end there, um, is I did a viking, so I just kind of made a helmet where his hair flares out. I made little horns there, um, and then I changed the feature sizes a little bit. Um, this one was pretty good, though. It was about the best one, probably. Anyway, there's a little, some more angles, trying to get a little closer here. Um, you can see I don't sand it. I like to leave those planes there so you know that it's carved. Um, it's just kind of my style, though. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah, if you guys want to learn how to carve, check out the Lucky Clover Carving series on my uh, page there. And I've got some other wood carving videos if you're interested. And uh, contact me if you have any questions.